I came for solutions, or you can go back to me. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening from wherever you're watching from around the world. Uh, it's uh, a couple of minutes after the hour of 4 p.m. in Uganda. And where we are currently is uh, Queen Elizabeth National Park, one of Uganda's most popular wildlife areas, one of Uganda's most famous national parks. Uh, currently where we are, uh, we are on the waters of uh, the Kazinga Channel. And we will be heading out for a boat cruise uh, in a few minutes. Uh, we would like to do uh, a few shout outs to people that have followed us along the way, especially uh, those that joined us for the chimpanzee trek that we had yesterday in Chibale Forest. We did see some really exciting comments from uh, people in the US, Australia, Belgium, uh, the UK, who uh, actually there's one guy who said in Feb, uh, they can't wait to, to be in Uganda. Yeah, so it is it is a pleasure that we get to bring uh, these views, these stunning views to you uh, live uh, from the Pearl of Africa, uh, Uganda. So 
So currently what we're doing is we're heading out for an afternoon boat cruise and uh, as you see uh, with, with us is the team. We are a, a team of six photographers and uh, travel videographers and we will be going around the country showcasing the beauty of uh, what you've been missing because of the COVID period. It's good to see that the parks are now open again. Uh, there is a lot of life in the parks. The animals are uh, excited to have us back. The chimpanzees yesterday made a lot of noise. They put up a fine display for us. And it's so good to see the wildlands rejuvenating. Uh, above all, uh, we are, it's an opportunity that you get to experience this physically, but also bring it to you, to the comfort of your room, comfort of your office, if you're driving to work, the comfort of your vehicle uh, this afternoon. So, uh, Abias. Uh, you are someone who has been to Queen Elizabeth quite a number of times. What highlights should we expect this afternoon? Um, you know, as we were chatting uh, with the Uganda Wildlife Authority uh, team that has, you know, that's been in Queen Elizabeth, doing a fantastic job. Uh, the rangers protecting, you know, the park, uh, some of the, you know, the footage that we captured uh, of, uh, you know, of video, uh, right video, uh, Telling us how elephants are coming here every day in the Zinga channel for watering, so we expect that. We expect to uh, to see hippos, crocodiles, you know, hundreds of, of different bird species. This is one of the most, uh, most amazing, you know, places to cruise on uh, to see wildlife interact and come uh, to enjoy this beautiful nature. For me, uh, uh, the the, the key highlight is to come in Queen Elizabeth around this time, knowing how busy this place, you, you know, gets around uh, around three, two, three, four, and you see all these boat, uh, boats parked. You know, to have uh, it, it shows you, you know, uh, how uh, this pandemic has you know affected travel, and the hope that we bring uh, all of us that travel is back. Uh, so, guys. We are going to show, uh, we we'll try our best to keep you uh, on a video to see, to share with us this beautiful cruise. If the network lets us down, I can promise you the talent we have here will not we will be able to capture it all for you and we will share it. Uh, again, we will we'll tell you uh, when we will be live again on Uganda Wildlife uh, Facebook page. Uh, to enjoy this journey with us. Keep tuned, we can't take your time for granted. Uh, we know we've all been missing this. We think we love you. Safety fast indeed. The boat is roaring. Thank you. So I'd like to do a couple of shout outs. I see Petson is tuned in. Uh, we see Heather uh, Newson is watching. Uh, we see Joseph is also watching. Onyango Rashid, thank you for tuning in this afternoon. Greetings from Queen Elizabeth National Park. Uh, Danaf, Manchester, greetings from Uganda. Uh, we see Jackie Mugambe is also watching. Uh, you're almost welcome. We are currently cruising uh, on the Kazinga Channel in Queen Elizabeth National Park. Uh, which is a wild uh, area, a national park located in uh, western Uganda. It's one in ten national parks that are managed by the, the Uganda Wildlife Authority, uh, to whom we really appreciate for all the conservation work they've been doing, despite the pandemic uh, over, over the, the past couple of months. Um, currently, we are a team of six uh, videographers and photographers, and we are here to capture uh, some raw and live experiences from the bush that you have been missing uh, that you have also been looking forward to 
experience very soon. Prince Chiwewa Ivan, uh, you're live. Yes, you're live on the Kazinga channel. <laughs> and yeah, the Kazinga channel does connect Lake George uh, to Lake Elbert. Uh, uh, sorry, Lake, Lake George to Lake Edward. Uh, we, we would like to also do a shout out to Roland, uh, Gabriel Ochen, Sewuma Ivan. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in, Anna Arnold. Yes. Greetings from beautiful Uganda. Waiswa Derek. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Lutaya Jude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good to it's good to see you tuned in. We see Marcus Santino Santorino Jonah. Do you want to do you want to let us know where you're tuned in from? If you are in Uganda. Just put up that Ugandan flag in the comments and we will be glad to do a shout out. If you are from the UK, if you are from Australia, the US, Belgium, Asia, any part of Asia, please do let us know where you are tuned in from this afternoon. So um, we're currently going to just walk uh, back to the top of the deck and give you the view from uh, the top of the boat. Yeah, so greetings once again from wherever you tuned in from. Uh, Robert, our Uganda Wildlife Authority guide this afternoon, will welcome us, but also welcome you, all the viewers. team of Uganda Wild and Live team uh, who are with us here uh, taking photos and also films of the wildlife along the shores of Kazinga Channel. Uh, Kazinga Channel is a natural channel. Uh, it lies uh, in between two uh, freshwater bodies. That's Lake George and Lake Edward. The two waters are within the Albertine Rift Gravel. Uh, Kazinga Channel stretches for 40 kilometers as it collects the water from Lake George and drains it into Edward. And the main source of the water, fresh water, is from the Victoria Mountains. As we commonly know that the source of River Nile is from uh, uh, Lake Victoria, but other theory also suggests that the source of River Nile could also be from Mount Victoria. And this can be evident by seeing the flow of the water from the Rinjoris into the lakes of George and Edward. And this water is drained through Semeliki River into uh, Lake Alpers. So Queen Elizabeth National Park uh, is uh, one of the most visited national parks in Uganda. And uh, also one of the most popular national parks in the world. Uganda records and Queen Elizabeth National Park happens to be one of them. And of the ten national parks, uh, four of these national parks are going to be savanna parks. And then we'll have forested parks and as well as mountainous parks. So Queen Elizabeth National Park is one of the savanna parks that we have. Uh, you can have a look at the people uh, in the water. 
and hipo kwa sana the amphibious in nature hipo potaba are amphibious in nature and among the exciting species of animals that are usually seen as our clients take boat ride along in the Kazinga channel but not hippos alone you can as well also see buffaloes you can see some antelopes uh, you can see some birds and then some reptiles as well in a lucky day we at times stand the opportunity of sightings of predators like leopards and lions but this is not that very common but depending on the luck of the day those opportunities do stand um, Queen Elizabeth National Park where we are uh, is known to be medley of wonder because of the beauty and the enrichment of species that we have within this ecological stretch uh, at the moment 612 species of birds are in the record and uh, globally 9 thousand species of birds have been recorded as Uganda has 1057 of the 9,000 species of birds. So Uganda has 90% of the global bird diversity and uh, this means a lot to Uganda's tourism in a sense that uh, we hope and expect high number of visitors to be coming to Uganda besides to get uh, happiness of the beautiful scenery the landscape, the animal enrichment, but also for bird watching. And uh, the, this big boost of species diversity is attached to geographical reasons. Uh, Uganda lies on the extreme end of East Africa's open grassland, and the West Africa's savanna, and then also borders with the North Africa's desert. Look at the areas like Debo, these are semi arid areas, and there we have habitat variation. And this habitat variation goes with the difference in the temperature. So, since you have mosaic of uh, habitat in regards to temperature variation, and that's why Uganda has all this long list of bird diversity and also mammals. Uh, on the African continent, Congo is the country that has the highest number of uh, mammal species with uh, 409 different species of mammals and followed by Uganda. Uganda records 311 different species of mammals. So all these have a very significant uh, uh, impression on Uganda's tourism. It has been an unfortunate for a while because of the pandemic that has developed and we hope things will get better and uh, we can really see things are getting better and uh, our uh, view to our viewers out there Jonathan, don't you think this is amazing? Oh man, this is absolutely stunning. Just watching the antropes of course running, seeing the buffaloes. Very close, eh? So <laughs> it's very close, close. wow. And quiet. And anyone who wants to enjoy this should come here uh, tomorrow. Hi Kevin, I see you're tuned in from Vancouver, Canada. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. Uh, I see Tugume is watching from Mango. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, I see Laurie, Laurie Lambert. Greetings, greetings from Uganda. I see you're tuned in from the USA, Alabama. Thanks for joining us this afternoon.
Eric Michael Mbabazi, I see you're sending greetings from Tanzania. Thanks for joining Kazinga Channel in Queen Elizabeth National Park. If you just joined us, what we're currently do doing is uh, enjoying a boat cruise. We are bringing to you this live from uh, Queen Elizabeth National Park. Uh, this is located in western Uganda. Uh, one of ten national parks that are managed by the Uganda Wildlife Authority. And it is a stunning destination for all tourists, both local and international. Hi Alina, greetings from Uganda as well. I see you joining from Romania. Samantha, Moko, I see you watching from Maso, Poland. Thanks for tuning in. We are glad to bring you these views live from the wild this afternoon. Enjoy them. connection you can't be sure that you will have you know all the behind the scenes and in HD in full HD that we will share with you later in the night it's so exciting to be back to the you know the Kazinga channel So we want to say thank you to Uganda Wildlife Authority for the wonderful job you are doing. We can't, we've been really missing Uganda, we've been missing Queen Elizabeth. So we're glad to be back and finding it live and wild as it, it has always been. Water. 
Hi Dana Manchester, thanks for tuning in. Uh, greetings to everyone in the US. Uganda sends a lot of love. We miss you. <laughs> I see uh, Van Aisme tuned in from Amsterdam. Wow, how's Amsterdam? Let us know in the comment section below. Uh, we are here, deep inside Queen Elizabeth National Park. It is a warm afternoon um, and uh, the views are for you to enjoy. This is beautiful. Once again, thank you, thank you all for joining us this afternoon on this uh, boat cruise in Queen Elizabeth National Park on the Kazinga Channel. Uh, we would like to do a couple more shout outs. I see Tracy Langdon, you say much would have been your 10th visit to Uganda. Wow, wow, wow. It's, uh, we hope to have you back. <laughs> uh, we, we, we will, op we, we will, we will uh, open our airport very soon. The national parks, the wildlands are open. Uh, we have had a gorilla, mountain gorilla boom. The mountain gorillas have been giving birth. And we will be seeing them in a couple of days. So we will bring you footage from uh, uh, the mountain gorilla kingdom. Uh, yeah, so we, we look forward to having you back. I guess that will be your 11th visit to Uganda. That's special. Thanks for loving Uganda.
Yeah, so someone has a question and they're asking about the water levels on the Kazinga channel. Have they gone back to normal? Uh, at the moment, they haven't gone back to normal. And uh, basically, this year, we have been having rainfall almost throughout the year. And the water levels have remained high. But particularly along the south of the Kazinga channel here, uh, the raised water levels haven't uh, created any displacement. Uh, it hasn't created any displacement of, uh, of the infrastructure. For example, the jetty where the boat stop. Uh, as much as the water level is raised, they have not raised to surpass uh, the level where the jetty is. Yeah. It's evidence that the water level is raised, but it wasn't that a problem that uh, led to the displacement of, uh, of either uh, in, uh, in, uh, well, we had infrastructure in all, it's been But if you look at the source, it's there and open. Yeah. But you can see the water level, water has reached to that extreme area. Yeah. So for someone that's a badder, what would be like that? Uh, the best, your best species of bird that you get to sight here. I know there are so many birds along the channel. Yeah, there are a number of bird species along the channel, and uh, mainly we do uh, spot here. We may spot a few of the savanna or woodland birds because of the nature of the vegetation along the shores of the channel. But uh, uh, Kazinga Channel is very special for pied kingfishers in a sense that. Uh, of sensors, bird counts that have been carried by U Nature Uganda in the different water bodies of this country. It's in the record that the Kazinga Channel records the highest number of uh, pied kingfishers. Pied kingfishers are these black and white birds that usually trail their balls at the edge of the edge of, uh, of, the, uh, of the channel. They lay eggs in and they nest in. Hi Gabriel, oh, we bring back memories of your last visit to Queen Elizabeth. Well, <laughs> good for you. I hope you enjoy this cruise. Huh? I don't know if you can see ahead, we do have two hippos. Uh, trying to zoom in. Right there, uh, two hippos. Enjoying 
enjoying a swim.
So greetings once again from wherever you're tuned in. Good afternoon uh, if you are watching from Uganda or Kenya. I guess we are in the same time zone. Uh, we did tell you we, we, we are a team of videographers and photographers. You can see uh, one of the members of the team is just trying to set up there. <laughs> How are you doing guys? It's exciting to be here to represent quite a lot to represent the wild and the smartphone. We would have loved really to see the multiple kind of 
Well, we have this one, it's the Castle Lights now. Manfred has this, Bowie and Cottery. The footage you saw yesterday uh, from the chimpanzee family is not going to be any different from what you're going to see today. That's the quality we're going to sustain that. So, as good as that gives you more, we'll, we'll also give you what you'll be capturing. This is one of the patterns we're using. We have four things. So, we look forward to sharing later. Thanks, Julius. Thank you. I need to take people back to the views, eh? <laughs> Okay, so yeah, if you if you are if you if you've just joined us, uh, please do know where you are tuned in from. Uh, we are currently cruising on the Kazinga Channel, uh, which is a channel that connects two lakes. Uh, it's Lake George and Lake El Lake Edward uh, in Uganda, uh, and uh, right on the side there, we are currently cruising past uh, a herd of buffalo. And if you, are, if you are able to look into the water below, there, there are two hippos, actually three hippos. There's another head that just popped up. <laughs> How cool. And if you look uh, way, way, way in the distance, uh, there are some uh, antelopes. I don't know if you can see uh, some brownish, brownish uh, animals with a white belly. Uh, we'll just try to zoom in. So beautiful to watch these animals from so close. Eh? Brings back so many memories for uh, everyone that's been locked up and just missing all these incredible sightings. There is your hippo. Seem to have been missing us. The hippos, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they seem excited, eh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And you know what I love is how the captain is keeping enough distance and not disturbing them. Mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing the work these guys do. So Robert, uh, do, you, do you mind just letting us know what birds are those? And there's something at the bottom that I'm not really sure what that is, a yellowish... Uh, there is a crocodile. Oh, is it a crocodile? There is a crocodile that's next by uh, a grey heron. Oh, wow. And uh, that's a female crocodile. Uh, how to differentiate a female from a male by a male look? is that uh, the females are brightly colored. You can see it as a uh, very bright, washed yellow. That's a female. Males have dull color. Yeah. Why is it opening its mouth like that? Uh, there are a number of reasons as to why crocodiles open the mouth. One of it is for gaseous exchange, but also sometimes they open uh, their mouth open, uh, they open the mouth wide to trap some small insects. Okay. Yeah. So you said those are herons? There's one grey heron. Okay. And then in front of the crocodile, the white bird with black back and orange feet, that's a black winged stilt. Okay. Black winged stilt and then a grey heron next by it. Abias. Yes, Jonathan. It's so great to see the diversity of uh, species. Eh? You see a buffalo here, you see a crocodile there, you see a couple of birds, you see... Oh, man! No, it's, it's amazing. And just look at that buffalo. Behind it, there's a crocodile. Croc and you know how crocodiles uh, are dangerous. These guys have, have, have lived so freely. It's amazing. Uh, basically, what usually happens, if you can just see of the buffalo here, there is another crocodile. Yeah. You can see the difference between this one and the other one. Yeah. This one is dull colored, so this is an indicator that could be a male. The females are brightly colored. 
And uh, what also happens is that the crocodiles, it's very obvious seeing them associating with burglars, hippos, birds, and what have you. However, crocodiles are, are they, they basically their main diet on the channel here is fish. Um, crocodiles live between 100 to 120 years. And usually when they approach or they reach a light ex uh, half of their life expectancy, these are massive crocodiles that fish may not be sustainable. And that's when they become opportunistic hunters. And uh, you should have had instances, instances uh, in Kachwe where crocodile grabs people. These are highly massive crocodiles that are large enough that fish may not be that sustainable for them and the therefore they go for human beings or for other animals that they can be able to put down. The key thing with uh, Jonathan realizing how those kept uh, buffaloes are uh, really going to water. I know there is a confusion between people uh, called some water buffaloes. I know these are kept buffaloes. They come here uh, one down the water but also submerge their, uh, their bodies in the uh, water uh, to kill pigs because pigs are not uh, aquatic so they can't uh, they put them under water they will suffocate and die so they can tell you to take off some parasites to their bodies before they go back for grazing. distribution of water buffaloes, a uh, bigger percentage of them are within Asian continent. So in Africa we have uh, cape buffaloes, okay. also as well as the forest buffaloes. Yeah. Which antelope is that uh, quite at the distance? Uh, that's the uh, Ugandan cobs. Those are the Uganda cobs, eh? Ugandan cobs. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so that's where we're trying to head to. I was trying to direct the boat captain. The captain? Him. Okay. Greetings from Uganda. Lynn Jacobs, I see you tuned in from uh, Gordon's Bay, South Africa. I hope I spelled that, I pronounced that right. Thanks for joining us uh, this afternoon. Evening or morning from wherever you are watching from. And uh, currently we are just cruising on the calm and peaceful waters of the Kazinga Channel. Uh, we see quite a number of uh, wildlife on the banks. Uh, Abias was just explaining a few minutes earlier that these are not water buffaloes. These are Cape Buffalo, uh, which, which is actually unique that you have uh, Cape Buffalo just resting so calmly in the water. Uh, well, Abias was just explaining a few minutes ago. <laughs> Yeah, because with the cap, I'd usually expect them out in the savannah, like in the dry areas, maybe just wa wallowing in the boat. But maybe, uh, Robert, you could just explain why they are, they are, they are here. Yeah. Uh, getting uh, closer or into the water by buffaloes is basically based on a number of reasons. Uh, like uh, my colleague had earlier explained, that these buffaloes do the ball to pick on their body. As they get into the water, they are able to suffocate the pigs, and the pigs uh, fall into the water. So it's a 
a, a mechanism for trying to get rid of the parasites of the body. But also what also happens is that when the temperatures are high, they try to cool their body and that's why you get to see them. Buffaloes are naturally defensive and uh, as you observe them, you will see them facing the lamp as they face their back onto, into the water. So many let them expect enemies to come from the land, those are the predators. Uh, we are having a look at uh, a Nile crocodile. And uh, Nile crocodiles are the largest crocodiles in the world in terms of size. So Robert, you're saying the Nile crocodile is? The Nile crocodile, uh, in the crocodile family, they are the largest in, some, in terms of body weight. Yes. A fully grown up Nile crocodile uh, can uh, have a length of up to uh, four and a half to five meters, and also can weigh about uh, one ton to one and a half ton. So you can imagine how big this would be. Wow. And uh, as management of Queen Elizabeth National Park, one of the challenges that we do face is what we term as human wildlife conflict. This is a conflict that arises between human beings and the wildlife. Uh, Queen Elizabeth National Park is unique in a sense that it's a biosphere reserve. Biosphere reserve meaning that there we have communities living inside uh, Queen Elizabeth National Park. And these communities are the fishing communities. So we have 11 of them in total. So what happens is that there is that interaction between human beings and the wildlife. At times it becomes a negative interaction in a sense that you find a person being killed by the wild animal. Either the buffaloes or the crocodiles or the predators or the elephants. So these are some of the challenges that we as the management do face. Though such instances are not that very common. Is this a better viewpoint for you for the for the company?
Give us a short time, you know. You know? That was really cool. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. you know he was chilling and then he thought he should he should get back to the hotel. That's cool for the company. Yeah. You can't wait to share this. You can't you, you can't wait to? Yeah, I can't wait to share this. That was really short time. Yeah, awesome. Oh hi Krama, I see you say the engine is quite loud and you are you are missing uh, some of the commentary by Robert. Uh, we will just walk back to the top of the deck. And then we'll stop somewhere. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll stop somewhere, get closer to him and then uh, be able to get you uh, some louder audio uh, as he explains some of these things. But right now just uh, enjoy. The views we do have two uh pied king fishes and uh a hippo an odd looking hippo in the water <laughs> it's an albino oh okay he's gone back into the water eh? oh there he is Chill here a bit. So whoever wanted Robert to explain something, maybe Robert can give a brief of. Uh, okay, let's just walk. Let's just walk to the top of the boat. Let's walk to the deck and get some clearer audio as uh, Robert explains this sighting. Uh, this papyrus is uh, a floating vegetation that has been pushed by wind from Lake George, and uh, that's how it got to be seen right ahead of us here along the shores of the channel. It has been heavy winds because it's a rainy season and this papyrus, as you look into it, you can see a papyrus and the copper fans sieve, they act as sievers and then they sieve the heavy metals. That's why uh, in Klembe, uh, copper mining started in 1956 by the Canadians and the copper that is being mined the water that is underground, because they are using an, an, the underground method of copper mining, and the water has been pumped into the nearby stream, that is the river Nyamwamba. And the river Nyamwamba drained into Lake George. So when environmental impact assessment was con uh, uh, conducted on uh, the effect of the heavy metals that have been drained into the river, it was found out that the copper part and the papyrus that surround all that are at the source of Lake George had the ability to absorb all these heavy metals from the water. And that's what we have just seen. So, copper alpine, papyrus, uh, yams, uh, these are among uh, species of plants that have ability to absorb heavy metals. Interesting. Yeah. Sounds like a natural sieve. Eh? Mm, yeah, Cleans. it's a natural oh. sieve. Okay. Mm. Do you want to explain our sighting ahead? Oh. Give me battery, battery chip. 